Sorry. Mike. Hello. What's up? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And this mic is not working. This one. Yeah. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed your lunch. Uh, we will resume the event with a panel discussion on driving traffic and distribution. I'd like to call upon the moderator, Marwan Farah, the general manager, Kuwait, for RLP International, to kick off the session. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Direct traffic to Buzz websites and applications today represents only 23% of its content views, with the rest aggregated across other distribution platforms. Publishers today are increasingly counting con content views across channels instead of page views a model that asserts that content is king and distribution is key. With the proliferation of channels in the content space, it's important for publishers to identify the ideal distribution mix for their content between social, editorial, content networks, mobile, and an array of potential hosts of their content, and how to best adapt their content to maximize interaction and conversion. This panel, gathers leading media professionals to discuss their best practices, the content distribution, and insights on consumers' behavior and adopt, ad adoption. Let's welcome Noor Al-Masri, Regional Digital Media Director, Sayyidati Magazine, and Dan Al-Hambali, Managing Director, BT and Dane. How are you? Uh, I'll start with Dana. Dana, we had a little chat together before the session regarding the way you look at the, I think my chair is a little bit back, yeah. right? That's better. Why? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Regarding the way you look at the demographic, demographics and, and uh, it's more of a lifestyle for you guys when you uh, uh, search, for, for, search for your channels for the target audience you have. Can you give us a little uh, bit about it and your understanding to the... Uh... Sure. Uh, we get this question a lot when it comes to how do we find the right ways to target specific demographics or specific customers or future customers or prospects. And I think one of the biggest misconceptions is when people take this idea of demographic and assume that it has to do with one type of lifestyle or one specific type of age group. Um, audiences are not supposed to be classified as demographics anymore. They're mindsets. Uh, we're in a world today where someone who's 40 years old can, can think and agree on specific things that an 18-year-old could still relate to. Um, so when it comes to understanding customers, a lot of understanding that mindset and tapping into insights uh, for those customers becomes more important than their specific age group. And I think something, that's something that's changed in the way that we choose specific channels. Okay, and that leads to, uh, to the best practice in choosing the distribution network? Absolutely. How do you do it? How do you work it with the advertising agency? It's a little bit uh, uh, um, strange sometimes the way you interact with the, with the client as an agency and you work on the best content that suits his objective and reach to his targeted audience in different channels that, of course, the advice is there. Yeah. 
I mean, look, a lot of the way that we work with our clients has completely changed. Uh, it used to be where we would come up with a specific idea and it was about getting this 360 integrated media mix across everything. Um, times have changed. Uh, now it comes from understanding who that customer is and developing content that caters to that customer to drive some sort of result. So our entire approach when we speak to our clients about how we choose specific distribution channels is no longer about getting the maximum coverage. It's about getting the right kind of engagement or return on my business objectives. And really, that's completely changed the conversation of how we plan or how we come up with creative or where we invest our money. And I think that's, that's the key takeaway, I think. And what about you? Dana, how, how, what you can add on this, on what Dana has mentioned? Can you ask us the question again? The question again. Let's say it in a different way. Mm -hmm. When content is a king, as we said, and distribution is the key, what you can tell us about uh, this sentence? Okay. Um, now, content is the king, but if you have the right platform to have that content. So sometimes you have a really good um, um, topic or a very good campaign, but if you don't do it and tailor it in different platforms, then you might lose the engagement and the traffic or the views based on your measurement in that distribution channel. So you, you at the beginning, you have introduced the panel for digital distribution and um, what is the, how, how we can uh, distribute and provide the best traffic for websites. Exactly. And sometimes when you have the good content, if you don't have the tools and the understanding, whether you're an advertising agency or as us as a publishing group, uh, that content might not be used to the utmost for the audience that are viewing or reading that content. And as uh, uh, Sayyidati, for example, and you have that well-known platform, the website of, of Sayyidati, how do you utilize the, the content you have? I'm sure that you have plenty of content, a huge number of content. How do you utilize it in establishing the right distribution platform for advertisers later on to use it? Now, it depends on the advertiser. If we're discussing the advert at the beginning, we need to say, for us as a publishing group, we are successful because we care first of our audience. We care to reach the right audience the right time. We care to be able to be there on all social media channels the right way, and to be credible when it comes to content. Once you have established this trust within different social media or uh, web platforms, then you think, how, what is the right way to distribute that good content? Um, we, get, we were discussing a few minutes ago about the changes of advertising uh, uh, platforms, and yes, uh, and it is, it's really good to see that there are advertisers that say, I want to reach this campaign. Now, this is for social media. This is for web. This is the content that we need on mobile. And based so on they it, have the understanding of this they have, it is evolving. It is evolving. I, yes, it's uh, evolving. It's a question I would like to ask you. It's, it's an evolving conversation. They ask for a content that yeah. they would like to use across the board on uh, all the platforms. Yeah. Sometimes they, they give the answer as limited budget or and I think it's some kind of lack of understanding As that each uh, distribution platform has its content. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I th I'll answer that second. The first question I want to just tap into is what she was saying about traffic. I think it's such a huge misconception that clients have, and again, it's an evolving conversation, but this misconception that traffic is what drives the success of a campaign, and that's an absolute falsehood. I can buy likes, I can buy views, I can buy follows. It's, it's a mechanic that's available to everyone to, to have. Um, traffic isn't what's key. It's, now it's becoming not even engagement. It's more about advocacy. It's people believing in what it is that you stand for because it's aligned to their values. Um, going back to the second question of content and how that's produced, it's funny because there's an assumption that just because something's on social media or on a smaller viewable platform like your phone or your iPad or your laptop, that when it comes to actually producing uh, content for it, it, you know, we don't have to admit, uh, invest as much because it's not TV. It's not something that we need to, you know, put 
all of our budget into, and that's completely wrong. Uh, the, the attention span of your customer has completely changed. Um, it's become a choice for them to engage with you as a brand. So if you're not interesting, if you're not valuing that attention span that the customer is giving you and delivering some sort of content that's going to be valuable for them, then you're going to lose them. Then you're wasting your money, whether you're spending 5,000 KD or 100,000 KD. It has to be relevant to them. And I think uh, it's so interesting when we talk about how each platform has a different way of how customers consume content. One of my favorite insights that came from the, the managing director of Snapchat mentioned it again today, was the insight that came from Snapchat being a camera-led uh, platform, understanding that how people consume their cons uh, content was no longer horizontal, it was now vertical. Something as simple as that completely changes the landscape as to how you start to create content that is consumed differently for your customer. And you actually see publishers adapting to that on their different discovery platforms within Snapchat, which is great. But understanding the, what you want to get out of each of those platforms is so key in whatever content you want to produce online. And I think that it's an evolving conversation with clients. I don't think we're there yet, but I definitely think we need to acknowledge that we've moved past this idea of, oh, it's social media. We don't need to spend as much on it. It's cheaper and faster. No, it's become that much harder because I have the choice now whether I want to listen to you or engage with you and the risk of me not liking you as a brand and disconnecting with you altogether is much higher. And that's something that clients need to take into consideration. Uh, do you think is there some uh, measuring tools for the content? How do you measure it? Again, great question, because this is also another thing that's evolving. While it used to be through things that were engagement-led, like views okay. and likes, uh, right now it's become something you can't buy, which is conversation. Uh, when I say conversation, I mean advocacy, meaning that if you say something that's aligned, aligned to my values as a brand, um, then I'm going to retweet it, I'm going to post about it, I'm going to debate it with you, I'm going to call you out on something that I believe is wrong. Those rich interactions are not things that you can buy, and it's an opportunity for you as a brand to connect so much more directly with your customer in a way that we couldn't before. Okay. Yeah. I would like Please to add... Like Yes, you've mentioned the Snapchat Discover, and it's a really nice experience because we were one of the lucky new publishers that uh, created their uh, uh, Discovery channel uh, on Snapchat uh, in May 2017. I remember the time when we started planning the content, and it was totally different. Totally different because of the vertical, of the way we engage with people, and the kind of um, measurements that we have when it comes to engagement and views. And uh, Hassan mentioned swipe up. It's okay. how many people swipe up, how many people have a screenshot for a conversation when he was talking about the snapshot. And um, we get every day inquiries from advertisers. We want to advertise on Snapchat Discover. We want to see, uh, we want to engage with your audience on Snapchat Discover. Now, they have a different advertising platform which we cannot control as, a pub as publishers. But you can see that, yes, it's not important the, as much as before the country, the demographics, but it's very important the engagement level that every uh, channel for distribution as publishers uh, role. And successful publishers are the ones that be able to measure for advertisers at the end of the day and for us as content providers, measure what people like, how they can engage with the content, and how is it different from a channel to another, what time of the day is important to publish content, for example, and what content to publish on every uh, day of the week, every uh, hour during the day. And uh, this is what I can say we have successfully launched within the different platforms that we have um, distributed and uh, published within Sayyida T Group. Okay. So here we're talking about a strategy. So, yes. so content uh, preparation uh, needs a strategy that later on will lead to distribution platform. And it's a complete recipe that is very sensitive to each and every product. Yeah. And uh, if I may ask you for Sayyida T, for example, for the uh, uh, website uh, versus the social uh, media platforms. How do you see the changes, the way people are looking into it? What figures do you have, you know, shifting from the 
website to the social uh, media platforms and vice versa? And how you keep the balance between them, just not to lose the youth? Okay. Um, things keep changing for us. A few years back, it was very important to have direct traffic on Sayyidati.net. We cared about people clicking www.sayirati.net or arrajal.com. This is what we cared about, and this is all our input. We tried even to drive people from the magazine to the online, while now, because of the social media and the ever-changing ever social media channels and how Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and now Snapchat keep changing the way people communicate with us as content providers, as publishers, uh, it's not important anymore as much as it used to be. We have our ways to keep on maintaining our direct traffic and attachments to the users, to Sayyidati and the other magazines that we have, but we care so much about the other traffic sources, and social media is just part of it, Marwan, because social media is just takes a percentage of the traffic that we have, and uh, advertisers care about a lot, but we care about also the organic traffic, Google, Bing, Yahoo, and um, we care about referrals, bloggers, uh, applications referring to us, and with every uh, channel, uh, they, we call it acquisition, with every source of acquisition for traffic, there are different ways of handling it, different ways of driving content and engagement through it, and different very advanced statistics that help us to modify and keep optimizing our content to drive the right traffic from the right channel. Anna? Yeah, I, I just want to add to that. I think what's interesting about what you're saying is this idea of how your platform, the usage of how your platform is used by these customers has evolved. Um, when it comes to us and how we advise our cl clients, when it comes to specific strategies or recommendations for distribution, the biggest challenge we have, because again, it's not about the mass reach anymore, it's about the association to specific brands. I was uh, having a conversation earlier today with someone about Netaporte. And um, it was a great conversation because we were debating this whole idea of why buy directly from the brand when I, they've created a platform that stands for something a lot more valuable and has given me reason to actually interact with it. Um, what I like about that specific example is it reminds us that, that now there's more of a responsibility on these publishers, whether it be Sayyidati as a magazine, or Facebook, or Snapchat, or any publication. There's a responsibility to, that you have as a publisher to stand for something specific that makes sense for my brand to, to be present on that platform. And I think that's the essence of, of the initial conversations about, okay, this is the, the time has come for us to create relevant content that's hopefully is going to lead to things like acquisition, um, uh, achieving business objectives, whatever it may be. Um, the challenge today is that so many publications or, or publishers in general, different platforms online, have not acknowledged that and have yet to acknowledge that. Um, once they do, you'll start to see how their platforms evolve, even in terms of the way that I experience it. It's not just about being online or being digital or being active 24-7 on social media platform. It has to be relevant to what you're trying to say as a brand. Um, what's nice about the position Sayyidati takes is, is the fact that it it claims to be this women's platform. Uh, understanding the mindset of women that don't feel like they're reflected uh, in a way that makes sense or is true to who they are as Arab women. That's an incredible platform to, to own. It's an incredible position to own. Yeah, but like it comes with a response but it comes with a responsibility. And that responsibility is you need to cater to to delivering the kind of content I, I expect as an Arab woman in this region. Absolutely. And um, I'm I'm very happy with what you said because it is a big responsibility. Everybody knows about the new uh, rule in Saudi Arabia where they allowed women to drive. Yeah. Who doesn't know about that? Women can drive now in <laughs> Saudi Arabia. And, um, we have uh, decided at Sayyida T and, uh, to actually launch a, a website based on this responsibility to, uh, for women, from women to women, to talk about um, uh, cars directory, what they Absolutely. need to drive, and the directory of uh, how they can obtain their license and the ethics and safety on the road and their families. And based on that responsibility, we keep and we believe that we'll be the one, of, as always, we are the one and first to launch a website like that because it's very important for Saudi women to know that information. 
and it's different. And it is a big deal to give them a website only for that, to provide them that content. But do you have that uh, kind of screening to the content you have? I know you guys, you have a lot of content, and I think you're utilizing it to the best of the, of the uh, magazine or the websites you have. But what is the screening process yeah. that you uh, Is it implement? even filtered at all? Yeah, filtered, no? As any website, we have editorial managers that are responsible for every section. And yes, of course, we have a, a team that can filter the content that is approved based on the policy, the credibility, and the information that is correct. If we want to talk about the CARS content, for example, mm. it's very important before we say that there is a plan, we think about the credible content, the content sources, finding the experts for the uh, Arab women, uh, for the Saudi women, to uh, get the correct content. And this also, I think this answers your question when it yeah. comes to screening the, it's not like we get the content from the web because we are the source of content. We get it right from the source. And this is based on our editorial policy, uh, policy that are set from the editor uh, in chief to uh, all the editorial team in all our offices. And based on your experience, what do you see more important? Is the clicks itself or the uh, viewing uh, the page? Or, uh, um, personally, and um, it's uh, within the whole team, it's not the first click that counts. For, for us, uh, we get from Facebook or Twitter, we get the first click, and that's, we have a huge reach. But what's more challenging is that after this user comes from Facebook, what do I do as a publishing company to keep them on the site? What additional content do I provide them? Images, videos, related content, and this is the biggest challenge as publishers have because in Google they search for something and then they find it. What do I do as a website? Now, Sayyida T, we're well known, but a new website, it's more challenging to keep that user that comes from Google on that website. And this is the biggest challenge for traffic, for uh, publishers. So it's all about offering value to the clients without asking for something in return. Can we say like that? I think that's a good way to and say I remember, it. And I remember a good example that I was uh, viewing last time, uh, a company called Whole Food Market. Mm -hmm. They used to publish a nice photos of food or vegetables and fruits, mm -hmm. whereas not like the competition uh, they offer, for example, the, the offers they have or the reduced items, special prices. For them, their understanding is that once they see these photos, they will look into it and definitely they will go and buy and then cook and whatever. So it will uh, It features that the space. product exactly. without being very overt about so it. So this yeah. is the value without asking them for something in return. And it's definitely a trend, but what, what happens when when trends occur like this, because right now if you went and you were to look at numbers and stats, things like those food, those food videos that feature different products and push for some sort of placement and accept the video, the context of the video is all about recipes. They're great in terms of uh, viewability. Everyone, everyone is on that bandwagon of this is what's working. The problem with that is that the customer gets to a point where they understand how the mechanic works. So it no longer becomes a valid mechanic that you stick to. So this idea of content, I've, I think we could sit here and ask every single person in the room, what is it that content is? Can we define it in one way? And right now, thinking about it, I think what's interesting about content and what's making it so challenging for us is the fact that it's, con it's constantly evolving. Today, it's a video and yeah. it's 30 seconds long and it's about featuring products without putting the brand name out there. What's it gonna be tomorrow? It may, it may have nothing to do with the product. Maybe it's more about exactly what you stand for and I never even know that it was a, it was a, it was a brand that, it was the brand that paid for it. An incredible example of, of a, a hub of content that I always refer to is Netflix. Mm. I think they're doing an incredible job from a brand perspective. Uh, I just want to highlight one specifically. There was a documentary that came out um, on Netflix for Netflix um, that was produced by Huggies. Huggies is a diaper brand that cares about the development of children and mothers. I had no idea that Huggies had anything to do with it. There wasn't a Huggies uh, product placement every 30 seconds. It was a full-on, full-length feature documentary, and it was amazing. But what was amazing about it is that as a piece of content, it was something that related to what I was interested in. It was something that added value to what I needed. It was entertaining to watch. It was on a platform that didn't feel like it interrupted or disrupted my view viewing experience. And it was because of a brand. And now I'm sitting here today talking to you about Huggies. Like, 
You know what I mean? So the return is completely different. And I think it's this kind of thinking that brands need to start thinking about. How do we find ways to connect with our customers, our consumers, our prospective consumers that have nothing to do with the bottom line? It's, it's harder to track because it is long term. But again, it's that whole conversation of it's building a brand. And that's, that's something that, that's a conversation that needs to be had a lot more than just the bottom line tactical conversations that we're so prone to, especially when it comes to budgeting. Okay. Uh, they say, uh, I have a good content, mm -hmm. yet the reach is not there. Mm -hmm. I didn't get the, the best out of it. Which comes first, you know, like we have this question, the, the chicken or the egg, you know, content or distribution channels? Or you think we should work on both at the same time? Um, I'm, both go hand in hand. Okay. But I think before you think about content or distribution, you as a brand need to have a very serious conversation with yourself about what it is you think you stand for. Um, and I'm, I'm telling you, 70% of the brands that I speak to do not, cannot answer this question. They can sit, but all they're going to do is talk to me about their products, their services, something that anyone can come in and compete with them on, something that is basic, that is functional. When it comes to your brand, it's about what you stand for. If you're able to answer this question in one simple sentence, you'd be shocked at how it ends up leading to, okay, this is the right content we need to produce. Okay, based on this content, these are the people that are interested in it. Based on the people that are interested in it, it's not important for me to be present on 20 different platforms and spend hundreds of thousand KD just being there. No, it's more important to maybe take three platforms, produce great content that isn't necessarily replicated, and, and push and build relationships with this customer base that grows and that you eventually actually see a return on. Noor, would you like to add something? Um, regarding the content, um, I would advise if I, uh, we are here and we get advertising requests every day from different brands that want to target different categories of content, men, women. Um, I would advise first to focus really well on your objective. Reach, you said content and reach. The question was, and what's so important? Before we talk about the reach, talk about what do you want from that reach? Do you want people to know about you? or do you want people to buy your product, or do you want them to go to your shop, or do you want them to share that content? Because if it's reach, it has to be something that is not direct marketing. It has to be about a cause, about a content, like the example that you have given earlier. It was a memorable uh, example. If it's uh, buying online, it's okay to have an ad to ask people to buy online, and there are different platforms that can enable you from a certain video to go and go click online. And uh, if you can, um, if I may uh, talk about um, our latest project for Sayyidat Mall. Yes, please, I wanted to ask you so, yeah. I read your mind. <laughs> okay, please, we still have, I think. But uh, part of us yeah, uh, knowing that uh, we provide a 360 cycle for advertisers, and we know that Sayyidat and Al Rajul have been always providing content and a destination for advertisers to tell what new products they have to, to have that reach within content. We have launched Sayyida Timo as an e-commerce platform to go beyond providing content and being to enable people to go and actually buy that product. The experience. The experience that you were talking about. It's because it doesn't only start with the content, content distribution, and then there should be an actual result uh, exactly. Which now can be the measured. The recipe, I, I say. <laughs> which can be measured. Now our editors uh, for Sayyida Timol, they have a new KPI uh, on Sayyida Timol. They know that topic, how many people clicked, but not only clicked on the product, how many people actually bought that product from Sayyida T, Net or Al Jamila or uh, the websites that we distribute that content with. And it's a totally new dimension for content. I think we can have uh, two questions from the audience, one for Dana and one for Noor. Excuse me if we can have the mic here. Hello, I have a question for Dana. Uh, you have a new client, you have a new brand, like he have like 100 KD budget, 
and he tried to build without ads, social media ads, aware about his brand and race sales. Is this possible on the nature of Kuwaiti market? This first, second uh, question for Sayyidati lady. Sayyidati, my lady. My question for you, how you can evaluate the, the way that, uh, let's say, uh, Versace, at their, at their uh, new perfume on Sayyidati article, so you create a specific content for that, and you add it on Snapchat. This better, or the direct sale on Sayyidati mall is better for this, for the, to raise the sales of this product. Thank you. Okay. All right, so, uh, valid question. My honest opinion is that marketing is a luxury that you make as a business owner, okay? If you have a foolproof, excellent product and it works well and it responds to a problem that people care about, you don't need to invest ridiculous amounts of money to promote it, okay? But if you choose to, don't, don't have a budget that, don't have a budget that's so small where whatever you try to invest in terms of marketing falls short in the quality of what you're producing. It's, it's just not worth it. It's not impossible to, to, to have a successful small business without doing any sort of marketing. Um, and we know that because one of the most successful forms of, or, or channels of marketing is word of mouth. Um, so, but when it comes to making a commitment, like I wanna market my brand, I would, I would if that's something you wanna make and that's a decision you make, then make sure that you're saving properly for it and you don't shortchange it for something that's poor quality. Because I think the poor quality of whatever you do in terms of marketing is going to hurt you than doing no marketing. Noor, would you like to add anything? To um, I will answer, but you need to do both and other things. Because Sayyida Timol is just a virtual shop. It's a tool. If you don't have the content and the good content and the advertising and the banners, it will not. It not, will not be enough. People might search for Givenchy and find Sayyidati Mall in the top pages of Google, but that will not be enough for them. If they want that product, they will buy it directly. But if there is a new, totally new product, nobody knows about it. You need to do both, and Sayyidati Mall is just a tool for you to do that to, to, to reach customers quickly. I would like to thank Dana and Noor for their valuable uh, input, and would like to thank the audience. Thank you very much. Thank you.